Hi, everybody. Hi. Oh, hey. Oh, hey, hi, everyone. everyone. How's, uh, this is going? a very... Um, it's going. I'm sorry, Eddie, you were a little loud. I'm so, I was stretching earlier, so oh, I could oh, I was oh, stretching my lower oh. lumbar. Well, you're, I mean, your physique is a little, just a little too much sometimes. A little too much. I know. It's, my back is kind of gross, but I don't mean it. Oh, I don't think so at all. I think it's a wonderful back. <laughs> Cody, how are you? How are you? Cody? Oh, hey, guys. Um, hey, I'm doing good, about? thanks. Yeah, oh, good, thank you. Good. It's good. Welcome to another Good Willow Hunting. We're oh! Back. We're back. Took a little time off. Took a little bit of time off, but uh, we've returned. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, myself, Jerry Rocha, Eddie Pence, Hello. and would be a noted film critic, but he's never seen any of films starring Michael Pere. So Cody <laughs> yeah. Never... yeah, you know, I'm I'm sitting here. I'm actually taking a break from a film festival right now. <laughs> I'm I'm at South I'm at South by Southwest. I'm on my ninth movie in two days. And... That's a clever green screen. Clever yeah. green screen. But have you seen Eddie and the Cruisers one or two? Mm. Preferably mm. two. Preferably no, two. there was Eddie no Lee. retrospective screening at South by Southwest this year. <laughs> so. oh, on the dark side. <laughs> oh, love on the dark side. <laughs> oh fuck, mm. man! I think Springsteen had to have laughed when he heard that song, right? <sighs> Probably. <laughs> he had to have laughed. Like, oh, okay, really? Like, What's wow. they're doing? Wow. All right. All right. Yeah, uh, that's their move. On the dark side! Whoa! <laughs> is Eddie and the Cruisers, is that going to be? Are we going to make Cody watch this now? Wow, we might have to, now that we're talking about it. Now that we're talking, wait, do we, real quick, do you mind if I just see if Michael Pere has been in any good movies? Oh. Is that, what do you think? What do you think the... Uh, I'm going to say no. you going to say you would not want. Now, by good movies, you mean not necessarily movies we don't like, just movies that in general people would right. okay, thumb I'll their give, nose at. I forgot he was the star of Streets of Fire. That's a good flick. That's a great film. Walter Hill. So uh, he yeah. already, he's already, he's already, he's, I never saw <laughs> Philadelphia Experiment, but... I did. Was Excellent he good? At, was that, so he's, so he's two. He's got two. Two for two for me. Two for two. Now, Eddie and the Cruisers is where it kind of hurts. Three for bit. three. Three for three. Three for three. Um, I didn't know he was in The Greatest American Hero, the TV show. That's four for four, pal. That's, I mean, that's Hall of Fame career right there. He really, instant justice. I didn't see that one. That sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, Dragon Fight's my favorite because that's him uh, going toe-to-toe going -to -toe with Mike Robert Zadar. Yeah, that's, I'm in. Uh, I'm in. That's a, that's a great one. Uh, so all you're but, doing is pumping up the legacy. I am. <laughs> this by is just reading a, it off. And and again, we're highlighting how you can't call Cody a critic until he's seen all of the Michael Perret films. Until he's seen Dragon Fight. And Dragon okay. Fight. Have you not seen Dragon Fight? <laughs> <laughs> well, I. You know what I want to do? I want Cody to see Dragon Fight for the first time at Sundance. <laughs> like we just do a fake, we tell him we're showing a new Edgar Wright movie or something, and we even have Edgar Wright in on it, and he introduces <laughs> it, how proud he is, and then it's dragon. Dragon fight. fight. What, Cody? What would you think? Would you be like, "Am I having a stroke? What's happening right now? What is going on?" <laughs> yeah, but I also here's the thing: is that I believe I don't believe in walking out on movies as a critic, so I would sit there the whole time. I wouldn't oh, get up and leave, would... <laughs> and so I would feel obligated to stay. So. <laughs> Amazing. The joke That's would be great. on me. Really. <laughs> right. <laughs> How many times have you wanted to get up and walk out of a movie? Oh, it happens maybe once a year. Yeah. At the at the most. What I'm... part of Cobra did you want to turn it off? What part of Cobra <laughs> were you like? I'm. Uh. <laughs> was it the opening grocery store scene? It was the grocery store scene. I was going to bet the grocery store scene. He was like, "I'm out. This is the yeah. dumbest thing." When when they <laughs> when they started firing at everything and not hitting anything but the groceries, I was like. What's going on here? <laughs> this awful grocery terrorist. What a walk really, out of my apartment yeah. right there. <laughs> it was that bad, but that great, but that great. No. And we almost didn't we almost walk out of something once? Did or we? did we? I don't I, I can't. I've only walked out of I think I've walked out of two movies in my life. Scorpion King. Mm. And mm. uh 
Dumb and Dumber, How Ooh, uh, Harry Met Lloyd. Ooh. Ooh. The Ooh, prequel. I've, I'm out. The I'm prequel out. one, yeah. I, yeah, I got halfway enough. into that one, and I walked out, and I snuck into, uh, I think, Bruce Al- Not Was it Bruce Almighty? I think I snuck into Bruce Probably Almighty. Probably around the same time, yeah. It's around the same time. Right. Spor- Scorpion King, I just left. I got my money back. Because if you leave half <laughs> before it's halfway over, you get your money back. I almost left during the first of the It movies. Oh, I thought it was that. Are, du- wow, yeah, really? I thought it was that bad and stupid. I was like, "This." It was when giant Pennywise popped out of the screener of the, uh, of the little big screen and was like, rip, 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 and I'm like, "This is Scorpion so." King. It's all CGI. It's all computer <laughs> bullshit. It's not scary. It's just computer shit. Scorpion King when Rock was buried up to his neck, and I guess the giant <laughs> fire ants were coming at him or whatever, and so he yeah. couldn't get out of it, so he just starts biting the fire ants. With the, he just starts, arr, arr, arr. I was like, I, I'm done. Would I you have not been done if he rocked bottom the fire ants? <laughs> he just. I would have been in on it if he rocked Each bottom the fire <laughs> individually, just rock, and then bottom. ended it with a people's elbow on the king on the queen ant. I would have been right. in for that. Then it's great. I you know I never saw Scorpion King because I was just told. Avoid bad. like the plague. it was bad. I don't yeah, know how avoid. that didn't end his career as an actor. Right. <laughs> I really don't. I really don't that's, know how that didn't. That is him. just how. I mean, that's you. That's how great he is, right? Like I, he I, survived I, yeah. that. I guess he's Man. so great in the room, the pitch room. I guess they're he's like, so good in the pitch to, room. We got to do this because Suburban Commando pretty much murdered Hulk, right? <laughs> I think. Uh, what, <laughs> what was the? Uh, no holds barred was that was the first one. That was the first and should have been the last one. Should have been the last, and then they went with Suburban Commander. Like, okay, never mind. We were, we were we should have just ended it with No Holds Barred. <laughs> Is that a double dose we do with Cody? No <laughs> do we do No Holds Barred Suburban Commando for Cody? Can Cody watch No Holds Barred? Could we do that to Cody and Subur- and Suburban Commando? <laughs> we're making him watch two Hulk Hogan movies. Wow, guys, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're <Dookie>. <laughs> well, now let's get down to business because we are talking Armed and Dangerous starring Eugene Levy and potential Hall of Famer John Candy. Man, a what did he eat? Eight finalists. What did he eat? Eight finalists. So that's already there. That should be in his Wikipedia page now. <laughs> but. He made we can change back. Wikipedia. We should log on to his we Wikipedia can, we page. We should log on to all these guys' Wikipedia pages and an update <laughs> how well they're doing. Orson I, uh, Wells. <laughs> Orson put that on his Wikipedia page. He's in the Stall of Fame. For <laughs> 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 clearing dumps. 2021 got inducted into the L Run Hubbard Room Clearing Dump Stall of Fame. <laughs> 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 Oh, we have to. Owen never takes my phone call again. Owen (laughs) King would never talk to me again. (laughs) Tom Bissell and Owen King, I would lose two friends, and they'd be done. But worth it, worth it. If that's that's on Wikipedia, that's worth it. Beyond, because you, you, the Ramblers, knew how upset both those guys were at us (laughs) for insisting. It was an uncomfortable room. (laughs) It was an uncomfortable room for insisting Unicron was his finest hour. (laughs) <laughs> and I never met them before. That was my first time meeting them. And so I'm in this room. With me. And you, you, you and I are just laughing our asses off going, it's what <laughs> name one other thing he's done that's worth talking about. <laughs> and they're just you could feel we bombed. We bombed you could, so oh, hard. With... You could feel the anger in the room. <laughs> All right. So Cody. Yeah. Your thoughts on Armed and Dangerous directed by the same guy who directed Commando. Huh? Oh. Talk about How range. About, talk about range. So, have... uh, you know, I was unfamiliar with the movie. I hadn't heard of it before. And right. so I went and I took a look on Rotten Tomatoes, as I often do. Not good <laughs> on Rotten it Tomatoes. It does not get love on Rotten Tomatoes, that movie. <laughs> um, now, of course, there's a, only a handful. There's only 10 reviews, but uh, right. out of the 10, only one of them is positive. So it's at 10% <laughs> on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> um. And you know, I, uh, I, hmm. So I saw that it was written by Harold Ramis, which I thought was interesting. Yep. Um, and I, 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 I can't decide if. So this is a different kind of side of John Candy than you usually see because 
he's playing kind of an unsavory guy. But he's he an does, asshole. Yeah, yeah, he's an he's an asshole, but he doesn't have like the charm because like Uncle no. Buck is supposed to be like yeah. rough around the edges, but he has a charm to him. Right. And I can't decide if I appreciate that or if I feel like they completely misused John Candy. And I'm sort of think the latter is maybe more accurate. I think it pays off at the end because at the final sequence, him being an asshole, you root for it when he fucks with the jocks who are laughing at him and he pops their tire and all that. Yeah. Kind of, like all that stuff yeah. is where it finally pay. Cause yeah, that that's where it kind of think finally pays off. And I still die laughing at the earnestness of that actor who played the truck driver. Oh. Going, well, hop on in, Slim. Let's see how fast this son bitch go. <laughs> like I still love that. I still love that fucking scene. And then and, when, when they play a, uh, uh, get your motor running. Yeah, Born yeah. to Be Wild. Yeah, and and I think Eugene Levy's great in it. And I think uh, the pro- one of the problems for the movie is that one of the uh, like the biggest laugh i think in the whole movie is right off the bat where he's with the white supremacist in court <laughs> and he's blowing the case <laughs> and just just how well he plays that is so fucking good yeah, look i i i laughed a handful of times i this is not a good <laughs> movie or a good comedy uh it's it's it just it's crazy to me that they that like they don't let John Candy be John Candy. I don't. It's a different John Candy. It is sure. a massively different. Yeah, but n- not for the better. I don't think because right. part Again, of the, like I said, only until the end. I think it pays off. I agree but, with you there. But part of the thing, if, especially if you're watching a John Candy comedy, part of the thing about him, the appeal is that he's a larger than life character. Yeah, he's a big like, lovable teddy bear of a man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and they strip away any kind of personality from him, I think, a little bit. I also don't think that Eugene Levy is meant to be in this big of a role um, in a comedy film. I think that he's a great, like, second fiddle. I think right. he's a, like, I mean, like, in the Christopher Guest stuff, he's great. Right. You well, know, this it, is one of the larger roles he'd had at this point, I think. He was usually yeah. never, like, he was always that sort of secondary. He was always a guy who was in that one super funny scene. You think you hate it minutes. now? Wait till you yeah, drive it. He was right, always that yeah. guy where he'd yeah. have a couple funny lines in a movie, but he never was the, the actual lead in a film. But right, I do remember. The, yeah, I mean, his role as a, as a scene stealer works, and he's great yeah. at that. But this, I just... Just something about it. Just like I, I just think that maybe it's just poorly written. I think. I don't think it's. Uh, I, I think this was like. Now, I love the movie because I saw it when I was much younger. And but like <laughs> most of these back, movies suffer yes, from that same. Fate. But but yeah. I think yeah, I think the real problem is I guarantee you like Harold Ramis was hot as shit back then, and he's like, look, I have a first draft, and <laughs> like, okay, we're making it. It's you the know short what I mean? film I made when yeah. I was a teenager. <laughs> yeah, this is the short film I made. Like, fuck it, let's do it. Um, yeah, I do. Like, it is interesting how John Candy is just like a subdued asshole for most of. But do you movie. think if it's not Eugene Levy and John Candy in those roles, if it's different comedic actors, it's would they far pull that worse. Off? I think it gets. I think or is it's it worse? worse. I, I think it's. I think the, another crime the movie commits is th- those two had been in so many memorable and classic sketches in SCTV yeah. for so long. And it just seemed odd. Like the only SCTV nod they give is when he does the divine. Well, it was it, it was kind of that thing. It kind of did that thing. I mean, not in the same way, but uh, the old uh, Belushi Ackroyd film Neighbors, where they switched right. character types. Yep, yep. And it just yeah. and it threw and it, everybody and it, off. And it was apparently a landmark flop of a movie. Was right, Neighbors. but had but honestly, if you'd switch them in the in that movie, The Neighbors, if they had switched roles and gone back and played the characters, probably a they're, classic. They're, it's probably a classic comedy. If Belushi yeah. plays the crazy guy and Ackroyd's the straight man. Right, right. It's yeah. probably a comedic, it's probably a classic, but I think this movie sort of suffers from that. Not because these characters switched roles, but maybe if you had different actors playing these roles. I don't know. Yeah, I, it's, you almost, for John Candy's character, it's almost like it would have been better if it had been a midnight run thing where you'd gotten someone like De Niro to play, like an actual. That's what I'm saying. If it was like a, like, a yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, Like you had gotten a dude who was just a hard ass, badass type actor and you stuck him. It like, just, could Kurt Russell make that work? Right. Like, you'd be the same thing, but it's just a comedy. You do the same shit you would have done in Tango and Cash, but it's a comedy now. If you put you know, Stallone like, and Levy's role and Kurt Russell <laughs> and John Candy's role. 
Do Tango and Cash make arm and dangerous work? That might work better. I think that might work better. I, that, dude, you might be, because like it's hard to because when you see Tango. Levy and Candy, you're you have certain expectations. <laughs> It's hard for me to buy John Candy torturing Zeus in a workout in a, in a gym, you know, where he wraps the cord around his neck right. and is just has those pull down weight. Like it's right. hard to believe John Candy torturing a dude for yeah. information. It's Even- also it's also very dated. I don't know if either of you rewatched yes. it, but it's very very dated. More so than I think any of the '80s stuff that we've watched, right? Or so far. Um, and yeah, I just I just feel like it doesn't let either guy be because Eugene Levy too is is best when he's sort of like a strange neurotic kind of guy, and I don't that, even think he's that in this. I just think it just in that one scene at the opening when he's at the yeah. trial and he's blowing yeah. it as a lawyer. Yeah, like that was that should have like I, I mean it would almost have been a funnier movie if John can't if the, you just ditch. The plot line altogether of them becoming security guards right. and John Candy stays a cop trying to rat out who or he goes undercover to try to find out who who got him fired. And Eugene Levy plays the same lawyer who just keeps fucking up and is able to actually somehow help him. You know what I yeah. mean? Like it just I just think I it think misuses it both actors. Yes. It's a very, very odd. Yeah, it's one of those movies that it, it like it worked like hell when I saw it, but Man, it just, I saw it again recently, and it, it was not as over for me as it was when I was younger. You know, here's just a tip. Uh, if you feel like that might be the case, maybe don't recommend it for this show so I have to watch it. Like, if you feel like something may not hold up, just, like, That's pick the another beauty movie. Of this. That's the beauty We of get to this. revisit it, too. Yeah, we get to see. If we and then we're like, you know what? Not Can't that wait good. to see Dragon Fight again. <laughs> Well, I think we're going to make up for it next week. Are we? With Back to the Future. Yeah. I, that one still holds up. That one, I think all of them still hold up. I mean, I it's a time third... travel movie, so you're going to have your issues with time travel, depending on how you are. Right. Uh, what, depending on what that person you are that deals with time travel movies. Right. But if you but can I... buy into their version of time travel, then it can work. It ain't bad. I, I, I like it. I, I, and I think you just have to accept is... their construct of time travel. I think the third one's probably the weakest, right? But I think it's. Still I pays enjoyed off the third enough. one more than the second one. Interesting. All right. See, I was because, the other way around. Because the second one was so all over the place. It was so back and forth all over. It the really place. was. The third one at least had one setting that it stuck with. Yes. But it yeah, was like, like the first the, one stuck with the 50s, so we dealt with the 50s. Yep. The third one stuck with the Old West, and we stuck in the old, you know, so we dealt right. with that. The middle one, I'm just like. It was just it goes all over the you're place. In four, three different time zones, three different time Dimension, periods. They open up another universe. Like, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's a little it's, much. I, that I one was the only one where my head was spinning. So, what trades are we doing? Armed and dangerous, <laughs> and uh, Running Man. Fuck! I really wish I really want to bring Tango and Cash into Armed and Dangerous. <laughs> that would have been a better. We should have done those two together. <laughs> I think that makes. I think that makes both movies better. Hmm. If they. Well, Running Man, we just had a recent passing of a of a major celebrity, the great Yafet Kodo. The great Yafet Kodo, he that's could have been. Bu- that's a bu- he could have been John Candy's role. He could have. Oh, Schwarzenegger and Kodo is Candy <laughs> and Levy. <laughs> Armed and dangerous. <laughs> Schwarzenegger, he's not even the cop. He's the shitty lawyer. That's infinitely more watchable, I think. That is, Yafet that Kodo is, could have played that John Candy character perfectly. No question. Because basically, John Candy... It's You know what's even weird, Eddie? It's like another gripe I have with this movie is John Candy, it, they just basically make him Tackleberry, but not without even the, as... Without there's no this, humor in it. Right, there's no goofiness to it. Yeah, he doesn't even get to be as... Like Tackleberry's a funnier character than John Candy's. Well, yeah, Tackleberry in the bummer. first scene, he goes in, he just shoots up, and then they turn right. the lights on. And it's a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> right off the bat, you know who Tackleberry is. Yep, it's true. Like I think that the Candy thing to me, it doesn't like it's funny. Eugene Levy's character pays off in the very beginning, and then it doesn't, and then yeah. Candy's character only pays off at the, at very the end. end. Yeah, it's weird. It's. It should. They should have found a way. So to So Yafet yeah. Kodo is John Candy. We trade those like, guys. And then Schwarzenegger as Eugene Levy. <laughs> I think that is. Or Richard Dawson as Eugene. Or Dawson. Levy. Ooh, that works too. Could that you works. Imagine Richard Dawson and Yafet Kodo headlining <laughs> a film. 
<laughs> that movie. <laughs> Could you imagine the poster? Oh, God, I want to see that now. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Richard Dawson. Richard Dawson. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, Cody. So, Cody, what grade do you give Armed and Dangerous? I would give it a C. C. All right. There we go. Okay. I, okay. I now, and okay, so young me, this is eight year old Jerry, A plus. Eight year olds and A plus. I'm going to go C plus now. I'm going to go I'm, C plus. I'm going to hang a C plus on it as well. Yeah, C pluses. C pluses and a C. That's not too bad. The that ain't C, that bad. but I give it the plus for nostalgia reason. Yes, same. Exactly. Same reason here. C is a movie plus for nostalgia. There we go. Well, look at that. We've And then we did it. next week we go back to the future one. And then, God, time permitting, the week after, we have all the time in the world, Doc. We got a time machine. We got a time machine. Oh, man. Now, again, to be fair, I have seen Back to the Future. It's just been a while. That's fine. That, but you've not seen two or three, right? I've not seen two or three, but I have okay. seen the first one. Woo! I'm excited for this one. I am excited for this. This is going to be exciting. Oh, man. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Richard Stop. Dawson. Yes, I go Armed and dangerous. <laughs> I want to see this movie now, Eddie. That's all I want is to see this happen, to see this be a reality. Oh, I should say something, too, for tomorrow. If people are listening on uh, Thursday when this comes out, yes. I am shutting the voting off Uh oh. Okay. at 5 p.m. Central Time. Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. 5 p.m. Central Time. I am Get shutting it off this time. In. I the polls another, close 5 p.m. The polls PM. will close. The night we recorded this, I posted it again. So hopefully more votes. How, how do we get a decent amount of voters, Cody? Yeah, we, I think we may have the most we've ever had Woo! on this one. This is, this is get... the most important election of our lives. It sure. really is. It I got to really tell is. you, I just uh, I don't mean to tease anything, but we have one blowout. Oh, oh wow. The rest are somewhat close, but we have All one right. total entire blowout. Wow. It's got to be I'm, Andre. It's got to be gotta Andre. It's got to be Andre and uh, yeah, Rosie O'Donnell. Is that yeah, who it I think is? It was Andre and Rosie. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be yes. a blowout. It, I, the more I was thinking about it, Fridge John Candy might be a low key. That's a that might that might right be there. on ESPN that's Classic. A that might be on ESPN. Like I said, Classic. that's a main event in any yeah, anywhere else. any card. That's a main event. Fridge Candy. That's... Come on, Herve. Oh fuck! Come on, Herve. 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 Oh Why man! Well, thank you, you people. Why, my sweet Frank. <laughs> Why, my sweet. <laughs> Me Poor guy just wanted world peace, and you guys are just shitting on him. Where we're just shitting on all over. <laughs> Come on, but you know, I tell you what, though, you know what? What ain't half bad in that song is that little beat. That was the easiest day for those session musicians. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, is that the unofficial ramble theme song? It should be. No, yeah. <laughs> do what's right. No, one's right. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get that isolated so we can play that whenever we want it. I think you're not wrong. I need to I add that to my did. soundboard. Yeah. At, oh, Cody. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> how great would that <laughs> Oh, how I, need, I think I need to dedicate that song to our friend Joe. Hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Well, there we go. Fuck it. Thank you for tuning in to Goodwill Hunting. You know where to find us. Go spread the word. Tell everybody you know. We're going to be back next week for Back Ooh. to the Future. Bum, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Beep, we get to see. Is that one of the weirder moments in movie history? It's just seeing star of Titanic Billy Zane just play a nameless, faceless goon for half the movie. He, did you know that? Did you even know that, Eddie? I didn't even He's one of the, uh, one of the He's goons, one of right? Biff's boys. Yeah, He's one, one of Biff's guys. Yeah. It's Billy fucking Zane. Like, oh, shit, that's him. But that was that was before, like, the shadow. And... That was before all that shit. Yeah, the Phantom and all that stuff. Oh, the that Phantom, not the shadow. The Phantom. That was before all that. But that's still funny to see. Yeah. Like, holy shit, look at Billy Zane. Yeah, that's... Man, very odd. And one thing I will I will tease about Back to the Future. One thing I love about it is even though two does go a lot of places, they still know the story they want to tell, and they still tell it. There's no yeah. Matrix bullshit there. True. It is it is very everything has a payoff. 
Right. Everything has, even little things have. I didn't watch two or three and go, well, these shouldn't have been made. Right. You're like, oh, shit. It yeah, wasn't like I, the Matrix. It was not a Matrix experience at all. It was not a Matrix experience. You watched two or three, like, yeah, I'm in. No, I'm in. I think you could have just done one and left it there and been fine. One could absolutely, no question. No it didn't question. need sequels. It, it was set up for sequels, but you could have left it there and been fine. They did a fine job with the sequels, but yeah, you didn't. It was yeah. perfect standalone movie. Absolutely. Well, there we go. All right, guys. Tune in next week for Back to the Future. Tune in tomorrow, huh? For the huh? What to Eat Eight results. We get down to the the the, the, the foul the, four. four. The foul Woo! four. Man, I can't wait to so get Come your on, Herve. Get those votes in. Come on, Herve. HV. All right. We love you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Spread the word. Be safe. And we'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Bye.